kids who owe trillions in student debt they can't pay back, are unable to find jobs, and live in little rooms over their mother's garages, have all decided that socialism will fix all America's problems. Sadly, they have too little self-awareness to realize that it's university socialism that got them into this mess to begin with. I'm Dr. Duke, she's Katie, and this is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello everyone and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show, the one, the only, the all-encompassing show that keeps you educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms, college campuses across the world. Today, we discuss states fighting to stop transgender surgery for minors, plus a small town in New York pushes back against Drag Queen Story Hour, and Kent State invites Hanoi Jane, can we just call her Hanoi Jane, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the infamous Vietnam protest. We call that sedition and treason. But we start on the college campus, where thanks to radical professors and presidential frontrunners like Bernie Sanders, more and more students say socialism is the perfect solution for America's problems. They can't really articulate Americans' problems, or they can't you tell you why socialism is very good, but here we are. Yeah, that's the story here. And uh, let's just start, just forego any opening commentary and let the, ge- the snowflake geniuses on campus speak for themselves. I would support socialism. I'm a big Bernie Sanders supporter. So, I mean, he's not really socialist, I guess you could say, but... I mean, he's called himself a socialist, though. He is. Uh, yeah, he has. I would want socialism um, just because I think capitalism uh, just is taking us the wrong way. Okay. It means, I guess, less incarceration, less poverty, um, just less bad in general. Um, I think capitalism is more evil. I don't know. I need to think about why. Well, I honestly don't know like of a specific socialist country. I just don't know. I know I wouldn't want to be in a capitalist one. I don't know much about socialism, but from what I've known, from what Bernie has said in AOC, I think it's a good thing for the country. I mean, capitalism, we've seen what it's done to the country. So now we have a honest-to-God reason to, uh, to rescind the 19th Amendment. Yes, we do. Because every single person interviewed was female. I will even back that. Yeah, yeah, you're with me on that. that. Let, let, let the record show that Katie Petrick is with oh, me on, a, on that why? alone. And so they're all women, which is hardly so, surprising. So you're assuming they're gender, but yes. Well, yes, I'm assuming they're not trans. Okay, they're all women. And then number two, almost all of them are minorities. Yes. That's another one, right? And it looks like a good number of them were Hispanic, yes. right? Right. So, so you're coming to this country. You, some of them still had their Mexican accents, and you want socialism. A couple points. The the one little pudgy white girl. She says that she wants socialism because less incarceration. Well, and, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, if we put aside okay. gulags, oh, we, put yeah, aside, we put aside. Yeah, we put aside. That. Yeah, we put aside gulags and concentration I'm camps. Uh, there'll but, be less imprisonment, right? And what was her second thing that she wanted? More, even, less, less poverty. poverty. Yeah, less poverty. Yes, because that's what I think of when I go to a social country, a socialist country. Riches everywhere and no prisons. Honey, you got it exactly backwards. And then, how about, did that one student, am I wrong, Katie? Or did that one student didn't even know she was living in a, in, in a capitalist country? Well, she, I, would, she, I, would, I would like to, I don't know much about, I don't know many socialist countries. Don't know. But, but I would not like, like, I would not like to live. Yeah. In a a capitalist capitalist. country. Is she aware of that we're a capitalist country? I don't think she's aware of where she is right now. She's like Joe Biden. She's lost. She's confused. She doesn't know. I'm convinced at this point now that they obviously know nothing about socialism. All they know is that they said the word social in there and they think it's like social media and social media is great and they love that. So socialism must be great too. Well, they also say... It doesn't matter what socialism means. And <laughs> two or three of them said that. You know, I'm not sure. You know, Bernie's not really a socialist. Well, he called himself a socialist. Well, he kind of is. They don't even know what it is. They don't know what... Well, Bernie do- also doesn't know, doesn't what, it know what it is. He, he, he wants to be a socialist Democrat, but he doesn't know what that means. And don't forget to point out, it's not just Bernie. The one said AOC as AOC. well. So there is the inspiration. You also have another one of those girls who pointed out that, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what it would be like to live in a socialist country, but I, I know I don't want to live in a capitalist country. Okay, fair enough. But they also don't know what capitalism is. They, <laughs> look, at the, look at the way that capitalism has led, misled us, right? Look at what capitalism has done. Socialism has to be better because of the horrible things capitalism has done. And they can't name any. They, except, for, except for, you know, we're, we're broke, apparently. <laughs> apparently. Apparently. And your parents came here, honey, because there was no money to be made. So you're broke, number one. We're broke. And number two, we, we arrest everybody. Everyone. Everybody. And so they, they, they don't recognize that the place they live, they're, they're primarily non-white women who are at college, going to college unmolested. Uh, you could tell from their accents that English was not, for many of them, their first, first language. language. And they're talking about how bad it is to live here. 
Yep. That, I mean, it's, it's astounding to me that you can come here, you can get grants, you go to college, you know those kids are all getting Pell Grants. You know that there are all sorts of diversity initiatives that help got them there. You know for a fact that all of these women are benefiting in many ways from the freest place in the history of the world for women. And all they know is that capitalism has destroyed the world, is destroying everything, and socialism, whatever that means, that's what we want. Yep, they'll just worship at the feet of Bernie Sanders. The 19th Ooh. Amendment, get, get <laughs> rid of it now. You know what? They don't even know what that is, so it's okay. Well, that's good. That's why. That's, <laughs> that's why that, it doesn't matter. That's why we're so brazen about this, <laughs> this right? Is because true. they'd have to. Somebody have to take the trouble to Google. Certainly, those girls who were interviewed would have to take the trouble to Google it. Mm. And I'm not sure they've got time. They're too busy. You know, AOC. AOC. <laughs> Moving on. All right. Well, we have some sort of good news happening. Um, there was a bill in South Dakota, the House of Representatives. They actually passed HB 1057. It's the Vulnerable Child Protection Act, which would make it illegal for medical professionals to perform gender reassignment procedures on a minor or to administer hormones and puberty blockers to patients under 16. This sounds like a great thing. Unfortunately, recently, the Senate committee, there was a Senate committee that actually voted voted it down five to two but the fact that we're starting to get these bills put out there it's not soon enough but at least we're on the right step. yeah and, and this is this is another way mom and dad you really have got to be skeptical of the republican party this is what happens you have the the assembly in south dakota dakota who voted 46 to 23 double the number of people mm -hmm. voted for it who voted against it it doesn't even go to the full senate right it's not even something that the full senate gets to vote on it goes to a health and human service committee on the senate yeah so at first it did go you know through the house right. the whole process it went through the house passed the house obviously had to go over right. to the senate and do the same thing it couldn't even get out of committee over couldn't get the out of committee senate. and this is this is not some radical bill no the republicans yeah. who dominate both the assembly and the senate were constantly being harassed by left-wing doc uh, uh talking point people about how you were they're all gonna die if you don't allow a seven-year-old to be get hormone transition, they're all going to commit suicide. It is a complete crock. And so, South Dakota, you are completely sold out by these, these committee Demo these Republicans. Forget the Democrats. They were never voting for any of this. You did a common sense thing. This is not saying that people can't be trans. This is not saying that when they come of age, people are free to choose whatever bodily transitions they want. This is to protect underage minors like we saw in yep. Texas, right? Where you had a predatory mother in Texas who wanted her young son to be a girl, despite the fact that whenever he was with his father. He said he didn't want to be. When he went to school, he wanted to dress as a boy. And it took the courts, the courts, uh, a, a failed verdict before a higher court overruled yes. it and said the father's right does have some rights here. The kid will not be trans transitioned as early as seven or eight years old. Yeah. And like you said, I mean, this bill, the South Dakota specific bill, it was for just guaranteeing until they're adults. Let the adults make the decision and not basically castrate or yeah, here, hysterectomies or any list, of this, right? which would have happened had they not passed this, but here's the, the list. Killed the, it. the bill would have get, gotten do any doctor who performed the following yes. to, and a, to an underage minor could yep. be arrested for. And, and not nurses, even 18, 16. 16. Is what they even were yeah, going not younger. even 18, yeah. 16. And the nurses who would have participated would have been exempt from punishment, would have been yep. the doctors. So performing the following surger surgeries on underage children, castration, vasectomy, hysterectomy, oophorectomy, uh, metoidoplasty, orchectomy, uh, <laughs> which is the removal of the testicles, uh, penectomy, phalloplasty, and vaginoplasty. Literally tearing down old sexual parts to make to build new ones, taking out the gonads, taking out the, uh, the uterus, all the things that identify as one or the other. F for kids under 16, performing mastec mastectomies, mm -hmm. prescribing, dispensing, administering, otherwise supplying the following medications. Puberty blockers that stop normal puberty, uh, puberty, a whole list of them, right? That do all sorts of things. Then you've got removing any otherwise healthy or non-diseased body parts. I thought the Hippocratic Oath said, mm. you don't do any harm first. Yeah, you don't remove it. healthy body parts for vanity, and you certainly don't do it to underage kids, kids under the age of 16. And but but Republicans in, in, the, in the Senate in, in South Dakota, congratulations. Yeah. Way to abet this nonsense. Yeah, well... Hopefully they can get this bill up again in a different form. The one just want to give credit to the bill's sponsor, uh, Representative Fred Deutsch, who had said the folks on the other side of the argument talk about pu puberty blockers being a pause button. And I'm saying, you know what? A better pause button is just don't give them the drugs or surgeries. It sounds to me like pure common sense. Let the kids be kids. Don't go in there and do all these procedures. But no, we actually have to put 
try and, and, and stop them from doing that. You know, the same liberals who are defending this to the death are the same ones Literally that, to the death. Literally yeah. to the death, right? Are the same ones that uh, would be all over a young mother if she got her kid, put her kid in the tanning booth. That, we had a story ah, about that, right? Yeah. We had a young mother, I believe it was a six-year-old. She got herself all fake tanned, and mm-hmm. she had her six-year-old daughter fake tanned. And, you know, those rays, those UV rays are, are dan- dangerous. dangerous, right? Dangerous, to, particularly yeah. to young children. Not, they're, they're all over that. They were screaming about how these, this was an unfit mother, that she was just, and yet when it comes to this kind of stuff, silence. Absolutely. And well, you can pretend all you want, South Carolina Senate, Republican senators. South Dakota. South Dakota, excuse me, uh, de- Republican senators. You can protect all, uh, pretend all you like. You're doing this to protect doctors. You're doing this because certain aspects of the bill didn't quite meet your standards of fairness. What you've done here is you've taken something really important and you, you gave the left a major victory in South Dakota. I hope to God, South Dakota, that you begin to elect out some of these senators who are utterly complicit in the destruction of children. Now. And we'll have to see what happens in West Virginia, which has a similar bill going on right now. It's uh, the House Bill 4609. That would limit uh, gender reassignment surgeries and hormone replacement therapies to those over the age of 18, which is two years older than what was happening in South Dakota. And it would also prohibit a parent or a guardian from substituting their consent for that of a minor. You know, it gets so me we'll there. See what happens. There are no Democrat controlled states where they're considering any of this stuff. The more Shocker. the merrier. Let's get it get younger and younger. In those theoretically reliable Republican states, like you would think South Dakota and West Virginia are, you see Republicans getting in the way of this. Uh, shameful. It's, it's the party that. The party of aiders and a better. Shame on you. Yeah, so that bill is in the House Judiciary yeah, Committee. We'll see what so happens we'll in West Virginia. Even it, passes maybe the it'll House. Happen. Yeah, maybe so. it will, maybe it won't. We'll Fingers see. Fingers crossed. Okay. Again, when you leave Republicans in charge of, of cultural, social issues, uh, don't count they're, on much. They're just if this was a home. bill about funding or budgets, if this oh, had yeah. something to do with fiscal responsibility, the Republicans vote the right way. When it comes to social issues, they're squeamish little babies. Yeah, I look behind me around they're here, adult, but I can't find their spine. They're adult men and it. women who've had their own gonads removed when it comes to cultural issues. Shame on you. All right. Well, here we go. Positivity. We're going to go to a little community in the state of New York called Rye. Robin Yanovich and Tom McDermott, they work at the small town newspaper in Rye, and they saw an announcement that came through about a drag queen story hour in their little town, which has about 16,000 people. And they decided, go newspaper people, newspaper people, to fight back. The event announcement had said, drag queen story hour for ages three to eight. Families can celebrate difference, learn empathy, and create crafts. Kids are encouraged to celebrate diversity while building confidence in self-expression. That was the announcement to go in the newspaper. And Yanovich actually said, My first thought was, we're not in Kansas anymore, or in traditional library land for that matter. But I refrain from comment because I'm an AARP member and a grandmother, and maybe I'm not that edgy Manhattan sophisticate. (laughs) I was in my youth. (laughs) She's so great. (laughs) Anyway, so... Basically, what happened is they had seen that and they decided to contact the library director, Chris Shoemaker, and this is what Shoemaker said. He said, after looking at all the feedback and considering whether we should be using an adult performer to spread this message, I decided the library should pause and refocus on engaging different educators. So by uh, Yanovich and McDermott pointing this out from the newspaper and, and the, com- the community basically rallied around and said, we need to put a stop to this. Well, good for this librarian who has more stones than those South Dakota Republicans. He actually said, you know what, given that this is controversial, let's stop and get some feedback. That's how you're supposed to do this. But of course, what what happened? Uh, it's still on pause, but you know the left is coming you know after exactly them. What's going to happen? So a petition, of course, was made to reinstitute the program, and the petition says, uh, unfortunately, DQSH has been interpreted. So Drag Queen Story Hour, that's what they're calling it, has been interpreted as threatening by a small but vocal group of citizens who, in their ignorance, have taken a children's event about gender identity, inclusiveness, and acceptance, and conflated it with sexual identity, sex work, and pedophilia. Protests have been occurring behind closed doors through scripted statements and anonymous petitions. The best part of this, this entire petition that I just read, has been signed by 15,000 people, okay? How many of them are from Rye? 
Only 456. And I love the fact that you want to know the, the, the real deceptive language, the real game playing comes from the pro drag queen people. Yeah, absolutely. They does. say that they need this. Kids, they need this because kids need to be taught to celebrate difference, learn empathy, and create crafts. You really <laughs> need men dressed in skimpy women's clothing to celebrate difference and to create crafts. Yes. No. Yeah, and yeah. empathy. Come on. Give me a break. The idea that if, if young children aren't taught that adult men dressed like in drag, adult men in lingerie, and hose camping it about with all of the underlying suggestive sexuality suggest if that's not something that you that the children have to be taught at five to be empathetic to that's a misplaced empathy well according to the the petition you're conflating this with oh, yeah. sexual identity sex work and pedophilia yeah so when that's you the- get up when you dress like a woman when you're a man, you get up on stage and you strut around sexually and you make all sorts of double entendre jokes, that's sex work, number one. When you're doing it in front of little kids, that's pedophilia. That's exa- is it not? I, oh, right? I'm so sorry. You're, the thir- you're, you're, you're thinking about Devastatingly it. logical, right? Sexual identity is that. Oh, third. sexual identity, right? Oh, we okay. That, well, yeah. you appropriated the sexual identities of women mm-hmm. as men. Yeah. So right there in their own description of what the evil conservatives are doing, How dare they tell the truth, conservatives? Mm -hmm. How dare you say that stealing a woman's identity, camping around sexually, and doing it in front of little kids is actually sexual identity, sex work, and pedophilia? Way to go. The petition right there undercuts its own platform. Yeah, so I was encouraged by this story because this is, you know, everyday Americans out there, a small town of 16,000, and it's the local citizenry that is actually making the difference, and they can put a stop to it. All the 15,000 people, they're from across the rest of the nation, and only 456 from Rye. You're Actually, opti- you, well, so, Good for the again, people. Again, my optimism. Good for the people of Rye. Going to be optimistic. Yeah, let, let's see. I'll bet you luck small town. that Chris is overwhelmed by the 15,000, and you're going to get a drag show there. All right? Bet you lunch. Well, rye? And, will it be a rye sandwich? It will be a rye, it'll be rye bread. And and I'll, I'll even buy you something that, something that you really like to cheer you up because your optimism will have been peed all over by the gods again. So you'll get to decide what that is. Speaking the of, gods of transgenderism will have peed all over your argument. Since you're talking know. about peeing all over things, let's just talk about Jane Fonda. Oh, Somehow geez. we'll just put that together. <laughs> Hanoi Jane. <laughs> so this one really gets me. You know, Of course it does. Why wouldn't it get you? On the you? Uh, 40th anniversary. Is it 40th? 50th. 50th. Oh, God, I'm getting it's old. It's that math. I was alive. Yes, Jeez. you were. On yes. May 4th, yes, 1970, during a huge protest against U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War at Kent State University, four dead in Ohio. Hi. Neil Young, right? Ohio National Guard troops fired at students, killing four students and injuring nine others. Now for an event at the university marking the 50th anniversary of this tragedy, Kent State decides of all the people they could have invo- invited. Any, could have invited the, anybody. The nine survivors. What? Right? They could, politicians of the day. Anybody. They could, any, no, who'd they invite to come and celebrate this? Jane, Jane Fonda. Fonda. And it's not <laughs> like they just invited Hanoi Jane to come. There she is in her little helmet, that, right? Looking, oh. looking all the, uh, all the idiots she played, all the, the useful idiots she played for the Viet Cong. The fact is they're paying her $83,000 to come oh. <laughs> and talk to them about why she straddled a Viet, Viet Cong cannon as if it were a pole and did a, a lewd dance. That's what you get in Kent State. And, and they keep wanting more money. We need more money, 83,000. Can you imagine people like, um, who's the communist that's, that's going around, uh, African-American female that everybody's inviting, former communist? Angela Davis. Oh, So you could be yeah, Angela yeah. Davis, former communist, and yeah. they, they, they invite you to speak. We had her here at Wisconsin Oshkosh. Had her here your, last year. We paid her money to come here. Was it Former communist, 000? right? And former terrorist communist, oh, by the yeah. way. You got Hanoi Jane, seditious treason, who during, when, when American boys were actually being prisoned, uh, being tortured in Viet Cong prisons, she's over there mounting a cannon mount, right? Yep. This is who you invite, right? But I guarantee you that to invite some uh, pro, pro-Vietnam pro speaker or somebody who fought in Vietnam who talks about the valuable work that was being done there would never be invited in a million years. 
Oh my gosh, I just looked up her age. She's getting a thousand dollars basically for every for, year. Yeah, every she's year eighty two. A thousand dollars for every year she's been alive. It, it, free speech wow. is free. And, and yes. smart asses on the left, people like Vox, right, said, Oh, mm, we've caught you conservatives. All of a sudden you're not you, for free speech on campus. No one's saying she shouldn't speak. No, she can speak. We're but saying, why are you paying her eighty three thousand dollars to speak? See, that's you being the capitalist. That's, that's exactly money. Right. That's you being the capitalist there. That's what's happening. And, and how about spending $42,000 on Jane and spending another 42000 to bring somebody in who could tell the other side of the story? How about that? Yeah. Although, with our luck, they'd bring in Neil Young. That's, that's true. Well, speaking since you had, had said, you know, they could have brought in anyone, uh, we got a comment from Ohio GOP Secretary of State Frank LaRose, who served in the 101st Airborne Division and later as a Green Beret in Iraq. He expressed his anger on Facebook. <clears throat> I served 10 years in the U.S. Army and eight years in the Ohio Senate before becoming Secretary of State. I certainly understand that people disagree on policy issues, especially matters of war, and that's okay. What's not okay is providing aid and comfort to the enemy and willfully serving as a propaganda tool for those engaged in hostilities against the United States. And Ms. Fonda did that, the very definition of treason. Yeah, you know, when it comes to Neil Young, and it it comes to, give me Leonard Skinner, right? A Southern man, Neil Young. Don't need you around anyhow. Eighty-three thousand dollars, and who knows? It'll probably be more by the end. Well, I'm sure they're going to play it flyer out there. Oh yeah, probably so that's give her a first-class hotel. First, oh, right? Of course, has yeah, to be. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> in, but, in, in, how many great hotels are out there in Ohio? You would know more I than I Ohio. would. Uh, Kent, Ohio is not, let's just say, the most uh, swanky place in the in the world. <laughs> well, they call Ohio the armpit of the nation for a reason. I thought that was Michigan. No, I always called Ohio. Maybe it's both. You're from Wisconsin. Yeah, we're awesome. That's like Pador- That's like Paducah, Kentucky, pointing to Los Angeles and New York and saying Hicksville. I don't. I think, with, I think being from Wisconsin disqualifies you. Hand. Talk to the <laughs> and, hand. And, and you're not. And where for? Where in Wisconsin? Talk Give the little town to the in Wisconsin hand. you were born in. I am not telling people that. Okay. I don't good. need them looking the me up. Six people. Well, five of them were part of my family. Okay. Right. Well. That's going to do it for this Monday's show. If you like the show, I don't know why you wouldn't, please help us spread the word by sharing it with your friends. If you're a fan of the show, and how could you not be, as Katie just pointed out, consider advertising with us. Visit freedomproject.com slash advertise. That's freedomproject.com slash advertise. And we'll make you famous. We will make you famous. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. Until next time, stay advertising, my friends. <laughs>